I was reading the chapter on introversion and extroversion and I was thinking um, what it's like to try to achieve your goals when you are neurodivergent, like for example, when you have ADHD, um, how people do it, how do they compensate some abilities with others? Like what have you observed so far? Yeah, we can use ADHD as a good example. Um, I will say that you know, I personally do think sometimes the the neurodivergent movement is, may take things too far, um, uh, because we can start to we're constantly broadening the definition of what neurodivergent is. And does that you know before we just call this differences in personality, for example, um, um, like for example, super uh, high functioning autism. A lot of people who think they have that, they don't think they have autism at all. Some people do, but it's really they're just introverted, for example. And now we're relabeling this as a neurodivergent mental neurodevelopmental disorder called autism. And really it's just your kind of introverted, for example. I'm not saying that all cases of that are the same, but so it can go, it can go too far, I think sometimes and we got to be careful because everyone wants to be unique. This is again part of the social media problem. It's it's breeding narcissism in our world that we all want to be unique and special and part of a unique special group. Um and um I'm not sure that's a good thing. Um uh, but at the same time, you know, patients with particular disorders, you know, banding together and socially supporting each other and maybe seeing this not so much as a negative thing and maybe there's positive attributes or maybe it's not as uh, bad as some people think. I think that can have some value as well. Um, but um, um, when people, let's say someone has ADHD um, in terms of, let's say, being a high achiever, um, what would that mean? That would make things much harder. Again, I see a lot of ADHD and the vast majority of adults who come to see me for ADHD assessments don't have ADHD. Uh, they think they do, or they took a stimulant medication based on taking a, a practically useless self-report questionnaire on, um, uh, let's say, ADHD symptoms at their family doctor's office took 18 questions or something like this, and they scored a quote, quote, unquote, positive, which those symptoms, none of them are actually specific to ADHD in any way. Um, and of course, family doctors don't have any real training in mental health, and so therefore they shouldn't be diagnosing and doing this. But of course, there's limitations in, our, in this Canadian system in terms of like seeing a psychiatrist or psychologist is difficult. So... Um, so, if someone has ADHD, um, it's really an executive functioning disorder. It has very little to do with attention problems, despite the name. It has to do with executive functioning. All the major theorists and under, uh, experts in ADHD know this, that it's not really an attention issue. It's an it issues with executive functions in general. Um, so as an example, um, if you think of the book, the conscientiousness or motivation and self-control personality dimension, everybody with ADHD pretty much is low on conscientiousness or motivation and self-control by definition. But not everyone who's low on that personality trait has ADHD, although in today's day and age, Anyone low on this trait perceives themselves as having ADHD based on this idea of neurodivergence. And it's like, I'm a, you know, they, they hear these things, but it's to be diagnosed with a mental disorder that's actually a neurodevelopmental disorder. You have to have symptoms as a child. You have to have basically significant impairment in multiple areas of your life, or it's not a diagnosis. And so, um, but people with ADHD are going to have problems with executive functioning. So they're going to have it really challenging to uh, to be able to achieve goals. And they'd have to do the things in my book even more. All this, the, how to make it happen section is really getting clear on what are, what are their values? What are their strengths and weaknesses? What is their personality? You know, what's their mission or missions in life? And then once you figure that out, what are your goals? Like, what you know, what do I want to do? And then you start off with your goals of when I retire, and what do I want to have achieved? Uh, not what I want to achieve next week. Then you work your way backwards from there. And, uh, and then how do I get myself to do this on a day-to-day -day basis? So all those things I talk about, the idea of using to-do lists, I have a YouTube channel and I talk about a lot of these strategies that are in the book, in the, on the channel as well. Um, you, you know, what, what are these strategies like to-do lists? When should I use them? How should I use them? The law of contrasting, which is not on my YouTube yet or in my book, but this idea, um, uh, you know, you're going to have to really want to do all these things. And, and people with the, the real diagnosis of ADHD who tend to basically the vast majority of under arousal of their front part of their brain, you can see these caps here. So we do quantitative EEGs with um, pa patients with ADHD, for example, and we compare people's, we don't use this to, on its own to diagnose, but it's just one more piece besides all the self-report, looking at their educational records, getting family members to rate them on things, looking at personality, looking at psychopathology, all these things together. We do psychophysiological stress testing, all sorts of things. And we look at um, the brain maps and, and the uh, 85 to 90% of people with ADHD, with the real neuro, neuro, neurodevelopmental disorder, ADHD, have excessive slow waiver under arousal in the central and front part of their brain. Their frontal executive network is the area that's under aroused. And this is why medication for ADHD, all the main medications are stimulant medications, which speed the brain up. Um, I see a lot of people coming in who think they have ADHD, but they have the opposite profile. They have excessive activity in the brain and they are really anxious. This is what it is. It's actually high neuroticism or susceptibility to negative emotions and stress. So they have trouble focusing and they have trouble motivating themselves, but not for the neurodevelopmental reason of ADHD. They have an over arousal, an over aroused nervous system. And therefore, if you take a stimulant medication, a lot of these people are gonna have all kinds of side effects. Can't sleep, can't eat, right? Lose weight, um, feel more anxious, nervous, irritable. 
stomach problems. And this is because your, your brain is either not, is either over aroused or normally aroused. And then you take this medication that speeds it up even more. And that's basically giving someone anxiety. And so it's going to usually make them worse. Um, and so, uh, but people with the real ADHD, if medication can be life-saving, it could be life-changing because it can basically almost fix that neurodevelopmental problem, which is under arousal, under activation of the front part of the brain. It doesn't like 100% fix it, but of all the psychiatric medications, ADHD medication has the strongest effect or effect size. When you think of uh, research and statistics, how much of a change does it make? And it's ADHD medication outperforms antipsychotics, outperforms anti-anxiety medication, outperforms antidepressant medication. And so this is, um, uh, the people who really have ADHD can really be life-changing to take these medications. And, and someone who wants to be a high achiever who has the real form of ADHD is going to have, you know, they probably want to take medication um, like a stimulant, like Adderall, uh, uh, Vyvanse, you know, Concerta, Ritalin, these sorts of things. Um, and that will probably make a, a huge difference, but they're going to still have to work on those strategies. And like we said earlier, is make them go from cortical to subcortical, go from effortful willpower, uh, your strategy to subcortical, in other words, uh, doesn't take any efforts, an automatic procedural thing. Every day when I get up, I do this. I don't have to make myself or force myself to do it. You know, I just know whenever I have to remember something, I email myself instantly. My hand just picks up my phone and starts to do it. Uh, like this is the idea. And it takes, it'll take more work, but I still think people with ADHD can be high achievers, but they're going to be, have to be really um, uh, aware of these deficits and how to overcome them.